In this video, we're going to talk about how to use logarithms to solve exponential equations. So you can use a calculator to find the approximate value of a log. Remember that you can use the log or ln key on your calculator. Remember to use parentheses to make sure that your calculator follows order of operations. Enter the numerator first and then divide by the denominator without clearing the calculator. Make sure to round to four decimal places because that's what's customary to do with logarithms. So let's solve 4e to the 3x minus 8 equals 10 using logarithms. So we have, once again, a term with a variable that we need to work on getting by itself. So we're going to do that first. So I'm going to start off by adding 8 to both sides. So when I do that, I get 4e to the 3x equals 10 plus 8, which is 18. So now to get that term by itself, we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by 4. So when we do that, we get e to the 3x equals 18 divided by 4. And so if we do that on our calculator, we get 4.5. So now since we have a base of e, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So I have the natural log of e to the 3x equals the natural log of 4.5. So now at this step, I'm not going to type it into my calculator and find a decimal. I'm going to wait until the very last step to prevent any rounding errors. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use the power property to bring that 3x down in front. So we have 3x natural log of e equals the natural log of 4.5. The natural log of e is just going to be 1, and so that's 3x equals the natural log of 4.5. So now to solve for x, we're going to divide both sides by 3. So when we do that, we get x equals, and we do the natural log of 4.5, and then close parentheses, and then we do divided by 3. So now we can take our answer and we can round it to four decimal places. So we have 0.5014, which approximately equals x. So we can also use this to find the intercepts of an exponential equation. So remember, you can find the intercepts by graphing and then looking for the where it crosses the x and y axes, or you can find the x-intercept by plugging in y equals 0 and find the y-intercept by plugging in x equals 0. So let's find the x and y-intercepts of the exponential function f of x equals 1 third 5 to the x minus 2. So the x-intercept is going to occur where y equals 0. So if we plug in 0 for y, we get 0 equals 1 third times 5 to the x minus 2. So now we can go ahead and work on getting that variable term by itself. So we add 2 to both sides. So we get 2 equals 1 third times 5 to the x. Now to get rid of that 1 third, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 3. So I have 6 equals 5 to the x. So now I can take the log of both sides. So I have the log of 6 equals the log of 5 to the x. So I can use the power property now to bring this x down in front. So I have the log of 6 equals x log of 5. And then now I can divide both sides by the log of 5. So when I divide both sides by the log of 5, that gives me the log of 6 over the log of 5 equals x. So now I can approximate this on my calculator. I can do log of 6, close parentheses, divided by log of 5, close parentheses. And that gives me x is approximately equal to 1.1133. Okay, so that means that I have an x-intercept at 1.1133 comma 0. And we'll verify this later on using the graph. Um, first, let's find the y-intercept also. So we have the y-intercept, which occurs where x equals 0. So if I plug in x equals 0, I have f of 0 equals 1 third times 5 to the 0 minus 2. So that is 1 third, 5 to the 0 is 1. So 1 third times 1 minus 2. So if I do that on my calculator, I have 1 third minus 2. And that is negative 1.2. 667. Okay, so my y-intercept is going to occur at 0, negative 1.667. So now let's go to the graph. So you can type this equation into Desmos and you can get the graph. Remember, if you click on those points, you can see the coordinates. So you can see that we did find the x-intercept and y-intercept correctly. So in this problem, it gives us a graph and asks us to find the zeros. Remember that the zeros are the x-intercept. Okay, because that is asking for the place where the function equals 0. So you know that y equals 0 at the x-intercept. Well, notice that this graph has an x-intercept at 3, 0. So it has a 0 at x equals 3. 
or you can say it's located at three zero. So now you can pause the video and try this example on your own. So let's first find the x-intercept of this function, which you can find by setting y equal to zero. So when you do that, you can add six to both sides and you get six equals negative two times three to the x. Divide both sides by negative two and you get negative three equals three to the x. If you take the log of both sides, you get the log of negative three equals the log of three to the x. And you can bring that x down in front. And so you get log of negative three equals x log three. When you try to solve for x, you get log of negative three over log of three, and this does not exist, right? We can't take the log of a negative number, so there'll be no x-intercept. Now to find the y-intercept, you can plug in x equals zero. So when you plug in x equals zero and simplify and solve, you'll get negative eight. So the y-intercept is at zero, negative eight. Once again, we can verify this on the graph. Um, you can see that the reason we don't have an x-intercept is because this graph actually does have an asymptote here um, at y equals negative 6. And so that's why it's never going to cross the x-axis. Okay, But it does cross the y-axis at 0, negative 8. So you can solve an exponential equation using common logs and natural logs. You're just going to isolate the term with a variable, take the common or natural log of both sides, and then solve for the variable. You can use your calculator to approximate solutions. Remember to round to four decimal places.